Grimm's algorithm using the matrix method is quite a simple and straightforward method to use. First of all, we need a distance matrix. The first step of the algorithm is to choose a vertex to use. Doesn't matter which one you choose, I'm going to choose D. So we cross out the row that is headed by a D, and we number the column with D as its header. It gets number one because it's the first vertex we are using. We now look down the column that is numbered and find the number that is of minimum weight. In this case, it is the five. This means that we are going to use the edge that goes from E to D within our minimum spanning tree. We've now included the vertex E. So that row gets crossed out. We number the column that is headed by E, and we now look down both columns with a number above them. We're looking for that smallest number, and of course, it is the three. This means we involve the edge going from H to E. We've now included vertex H, and so we cross out the row, put a number above H, and we look down those columns. Notice that we're looking down all of the columns with a number above them. We're not just looking down the column that has most recently been numbered. In this case, the lowest number of a numbered column is number four. This means that we're going to use the edge going from C to E. So we include that edge and the vertex. Now, normally when you're doing this, you should use a separate set of vertices to add the edges onto to create your minimum spanning tree. I'm using the same diagram so that it's clear to you what is happening, but I would definitely advise using unconnected vertices to then construct your tree from it. We've most recently added C. We cross out the row, add the number above vertex C, and then we look down all four columns that have a number above them. The lowest number in this case is the 12. This is the edge from G to E. We include that one. That's involving vertex G. Cross out its row, add a number above, and look down the columns. Smallest number now is the six. This is involving the edge from F to G, which allows us to use vertex F. Cross out the row, add the number above the column, and look down those rows. The smallest one that has not been deleted at this stage is the eight going from B to G. This involves vertex B, so we cross out its row, add a number above it, and then look down those columns. Smallest number now is of course the four. This allows us to include the edge from B to A, and we've included our last vertex. Now we haven't actually finished at this stage, we do need to carry on until all columns have a number above them. So we cross out the row involving A and put a number above it. Now if you're doing this method for an exam, the examiner is going to be looking for those numbers above the columns to make sure that you've used the method correctly. Remember that in decision maths, the method is what the examiner is going to be looking at. The final answer is less important. It's all about the method. So you've got to make sure that you're including every stage of the algorithm. The matrix method of PRIMS is quite simple and quite straightforward to use. The main place where people have difficulties is in looking down all of the columns that are numbered at any stage. Make sure you look down all of them to make sure that you have got the lowest weight edge at any stage. If you can manage that, it is a pretty easy algorithm to use. However, good luck for you using it.